Cool. Hey, everybody. Um, today we are doing our capstone kickoff. I know y'all just finished your phase four presentations and some of you are still working on your phase four. So like, you don't have to worry about this too much right now. Just know that next week is a break week. So while you're working on your phase four project, you don't have to worry about any new material. Actually, you don't have to worry about any new material at all. Um, but yeah, there's Thanksgiving next Thursday and Friday where there will be no instructor support. But uh, Monday through Wednesday, if you need anything, there will still be instructors. You can start slacking out the meet if you have any questions during that time. Um, so, right, Capstone begins officially on the 29th of November, and it goes for eight weeks. However, for you guys, it might be nine, it is more like nine weeks because uh, between weeks four and five, we actually have a week off. And because Flatiron School takes that into account, you technically have nine weeks for your Capstone, which pro versus con, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you have an extra week because this holiday break. Uh, there will be no instructor support at all. Um, so just be aware of that. I put that on the calendar. Um, and then also, yeah, it continues up till here. You have your eight weeks of capstone. You will have your presentations on the last Wednesday of your eight week capstone period. So January 26. And then you have two weeks following that being your capstone review period. So during that time or sooner if you want, you can definitely discuss with Avanit. Um, you can do your capstone review. Uh, up until February the 11th. After which, um, I'll go through more details on like what to expect when you're at that graduation phase, which I know is like in February, but it's closer than you think. Um, okay, let's talk about some capstone details first. Um, first, you have to do a capstone pitch. Um, I'm going to slack each of you who have already pitched me your ideas. Uh, so you don't have to do like a more formalized pitch with Abni and he will know uh, the details of your project because I will document all of that for him. Uh, so by December 10th, um, Abni needs to be aware of your capstone idea, whether that is through a Slack message being like, okay, these are the details on my project I would like to work on and I'll, and I'll um, mention what these details are. Uh, it can also be over a one-on-one -on -one with him. Or if you've already done it with me, you don't have to worry about this step. And I will let you know, or I'll slack you to clarify if your idea is still your idea. Um, I talked about this break week already. Presentations, keep this date in mind. Review deadline, keep this in mind. Now, I personally also always forget about this, but you need your four blogs to graduate. Uh, so your submission links, as usual, they are over here on your homeroom. Um, you just have to submit them. If you finish your capstone project and you don't have four blogs, you cannot graduate until you finish your four blogs. So just be aware of that. Okay, so first, what constitutes a capstone project? Um, so um, in terms of what kind of skills you'll be utilizing or what kind of stuff that we've learned that we'll be utilizing, we don't have to combine everything that we've learned over the course of this boot camp. It can be pretty much um, technically equivalent to a phase two, three, or four project. So that means you can do a regression. Of course, you want it to be a slightly more advanced regression, uh, not just like linear regression check p values, uh, which I, I don't think any of you here are thinking of doing regression, so that's fine. Um, it can be a regression that is counted. Uh, you could do classification just like phase three, and you can also do any of the one topics that was in phase four. Um, so just think of it as like a phase project, but a little bit more. You're going to be doing a little bit extra in different parts of your project and if, which parts you decide to expand on is very much up to you. Uh, so one requirement, though, is that for the capstone project, you have to source your own data. Um, most likely it will come from web scraping or an API. Um, so here I said it has to be equivalent of an phase project with something added. And here are some, a list of APIs that you can use, or you can just, you know, Google it and find whatever data you're interested in. Uh, and you can also do web scraping. Uh, one of the videos that I've already put, I've already put all the capsule videos on your playlist, by the way. Uh, one of the videos I actually go over a review of some of the most widely used APIs, and I go through a bit of like a web scraping things to keep in mind. Um, some of you might consider doing this, especially if you're considering using like image data. Here is a former student's project uh, that scraped Google images. It's using the library Selenium, um, which basically like controls your like mouse and keyboard with code. Um, so I've linked their notebook. Feel free to adapt their code. Don't just copy it because it will not work for you. Um, 
I've also linked here a couple of project planners. Now you don't have to use these and some people have found it useful to like fill these out to pitch their project, um, but you don't have to use them if you if you feel like you have a good enough idea. Uh, just for some people I know like having things laid out like as a whole makes it easier to work on their project. So here's one example and really use whichever one you think is better works better for you. Uh, all you have to do is just make a copy and fill these out. So this will this kind of like divides your project into okay, these are the different aspects of it. Here's one. And here is another one uh, where it's like is laid out slightly differently. What's the problem you're trying to solve model 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 data sources so on and so forth. You don't have to fill in every uh, you don't have to fill in every field either. It's really just like a framework for you to plan your project with. Um, when it comes to planning your project, I think for a lot of you, this will be like the first project where you're doing like an end-to-end -end data science project um, using some sort of way to keep track of all of the mini tasks that you're doing in your project is gonna be very helpful. Um, so uh, I highly recommend using something like either like a notes app of some sort where you have your check boxes of like, okay, I'm doing like this first part, I need to collect my data or I need to like get a key for this API or I need to make sure this data is clean. Uh, I would make check boxes like that. Um, if anyone has heard of Trello, actually, let me see if I can find some examples of Trello. Uh, images please look good. Okay. So you could also think, uh, you could also consider using something like Trello and the way that Trello works, let me just use this image as an example. Uh, what you can do is you, it's kind of like a task management software. I've used this before for larger scale projects where you can say, all right, make a list of all the things that you have to do. Uh, things are coming in upcoming. If you want, you can set yourself like deadlines and like mini check boxes within that. And you can pretty much like drag these cards from like upcoming to in progress to done as you work your way through it. So for some people, this task management, any software that is like this um, is helpful. This is pretty much akin to like in the older days, uh, software developers would make a, a lot of post-its and just like put post-its in different columns of on their wall or something like that. You could do that too. Uh, but just keeping track of all the mini tasks within your project makes it, for a lot of people, makes it easier to, to um, keep track of and easy, easier to manage. And I myself, whenever I have like a bigger project, I find myself doing this too. I personally just use my notes app and like check boxes, but to each their own. So that is Trello. Let me actually put that in here or make a Trello board. Oh, they know, cool, okay, awesome. So I've linked this like scraping Google images uh, thing. So when I say that your data has to be obtained from somewhere else, uh, some things that are not acceptable, um, no Kaggle data sets uh, because a Kaggle data set is usually one that a lot of people have already built problems uh, using. Uh, so we want your projects to be more unique. So we usually say no to uh, Kaggle data sets if you're just like downloading the CSV, plugging it into um, into your or, like opening up in your Jupyter notebook. Um, so that's usually not allowed unless you are joining this CSV with another data source. Then then that's usually okay. And usually if you have like very very complex data cleaning that's going to be involved, then there's usually a little bit of flexibility. Um, with what kind of data you can use if it is like, you know, an out of the box data source. Um, but usually we will say no to uh, out of the box data sets. So just keep in mind that, that that's a thing. All right, well, I know, I think all of you here have like given me like some idea of what your capstone project is gonna be. But for those who are watching this recording, um, some places to start. Um, the story I like to tell is like, I did not know what my capstone project was going to be. Therefore, I had to like <laughs> come up with a project in the span of like a week and do it all in a week. I do not recommend doing that. So some things that like have, have helped students after me uh, come up with project ideas. First, are there specific kind of models that you would like to use in your project? So let's say maybe, um, maybe you just want to do an NLP project. That I think is a common thing that, that people, or like a very topic specific project, like, oh, I didn't do NLP for my phase four. I would like to do that. Um, I would like to do neural networks. If it's something that's more topic specific, great. Uh, you can use that as a starting point and start thinking of, okay, what kind of data to use. Um, are there specific industries that you want to gear yourself towards? Um, actually, it's really interesting uh, now because data science is getting more and more widespread across all fields. If you just Google, like, let's say you're interested in 
uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of an industry. So let's just say you're interested in, um, okay, the maritime industry. I say that because I did like a hackathon for maritime industry in the past. Uh, but let's just say you're interested in the maritime industry. Something you do is just look up maritime data science projects. And a lot of examples will come up. Sometimes they even mention some data sources that the projects use, and you can go off of that as well. So that's specific industries. Is there a specific data that you're interested in, in exploring? I think fewer people go down this route. Like not many people come across like, oh, this is a shiny data set. I want to do a project on this data set. Uh, but if you do, that's also a place to start. Um, I personally like to explore towards data science. Uh, I am subscribed to them. I get their reading list like every week. And so it's a really good place to just get a sense of what other people are doing. Um, and finally, like if you're really having trouble thinking about what to do, this is actually how I came up with my project idea. I knew I wanted to do a recommendation engine with SVD. And what I did was I went on GitHub and I searched through all repos on GitHub. I just typed in the search bar, like recommendation systems SVD. It's github.com. I don't want to go to that. And then I'll just search like Python or Jupyter recommendation or something like that and if i search all of github and github is always a little bit slow so hopefully it won't take too long but yeah you'll see a bunch of recommendation uh engine projects that pop up maybe you can get some ideas of like what kind of data sets are appropriate for doing the thing that you want to do um so yeah here you can see already there's like a bunch there's like uh movies that was our phase four project um, let's see, anime recommendation engine, cool, Netflix, Spotify, um, beer. So that's how I figured out. Uh, I, I did a rec, I did like a restaurant recommendation system using Yelp's API data. Yeah, that's another way to like get inspiration for a project. Okay, so those are places to start. Now, when you're pitching your project, and if you have told me your project idea, I would have asked some of these guiding questions. Um, first, your data set. I mean, with no data, you can't do a project. And like, oftentimes I have to say like no to a really cool project idea because a student can't find the data. Um, so make sure that you can get the data that you wanna get. Now, like I am very, I mean, we're, I'm aware that like, you know, you all are still data science students and it's not always possible to get the data that you ideally want to work with. Um, don't pay for your data. I mean, unless you really want to, I'm not like no one at Flatiron School is expecting you to pay for like quality data. Um, oftentimes data can be one of the limitations that you mentioned in your project. So data set, make sure you can get that. Now, when you're pitching your project, mention where you're thinking of getting the data from. Um, some models you're intending to use and this more so to just talk about, is it a classification regression? Is it um, is it a recommendation engine? Is it a time series forecasting? That's really the question that we use to kind of figure out what kind of machine learning you're, you're going to be doing. Next, your business case. So this is the project that you're most likely going to be talking the most about during interviews. And so you want there to be a strong business case, or even if it's not like a, you know, I can get you more profit kind of business case, at least something that people will be intrigued by and interested in. Um, like a good why are you doing this project uh, usually gives you a lot to talk about. Um, and because of that, like usually if if you're doing something that you are, you know, genuinely interested in or something that's related to something that you're currently doing, um, you have a lot more context, contextual knowledge to uh, to come up with a business case around your project. I mean, it's not always necessary. Like I, I did, I have never done anything with restaurants and I still did a restaurant recommendation system, but but it does help sometimes. Um, this is something that I haven't really talked about before. Um, thinking about what your MVP is going to be versus your ideal final project. Uh, so MVP stands for minimum viable product. Minimum viable product. Uh, and the whole idea of an MVP actually comes from software engineering. So let's say you're building an app and they give you like a year to build this entire app. And all of a sudden they only like two months in, they say, oh, we need this app in like six months. Um, that is a good time of thinking, oh, I got to come up with an MVP, like a minimum viable app product. So what in the case of your data science project, what is the minimum product that you can come up with for your, for your project? if that makes sense. So usually an MVP for a capstone project is usually equivalent to a phase project. So maybe you don't have your extra like bells and whistles, um, your extra like, you know, different functionality. 
Um, but maybe, you know, life happens. Maybe like you get like sucked down some in, like crazy data science rabbit holes and you run out of time. Um, you can usually still pass with an MVP. So having an idea of like, okay, this is my idea of a project. This will be my scaled down passable idea of a project. And some people will have, oh, this is my, like, if I had infinite amount of time, this will be my project. Um, so it's a good idea to think about, okay, the different tiers of what you're going to be able to achieve in the, in the next two, two months. Cool. Any questions so far about, like, the introduction of our, of our capstones? So MV, so the MVP is like, is what we get done versus what we want to get done? Is that? Yeah, the, I would say like, think of MVP as like, okay, I only have two weeks to do my capstone idea. What can be done? Gotcha. All right, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, and like your MVP should include like a somewhat full data science pro process. Maybe you don't use as complex models. Like maybe instead of neural networks, you'll have to lower it down to like, your scikit-learn models. Maybe you don't create that like front-end dashboard that you wanted to create. Um, maybe you don't have your, um, I don't know, maybe you don't do like as much feature engineering as you would have liked, but it still has, you know, modeling done. It still has some conclusions that you can draw, maybe just not as in-depth. Gotcha. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I mean, it's not to be discouraging, but like there are like, it, ha it does happen fairly often that like students ideal projects get like by the end of their capsule period end up just being what they thought their MVPs are going to be. And it's always good to have that like safe, safety net, I guess, but it's also a really good practice in like scoping uh, your project for like, you know, time management and stuff like that. But yeah, having a plan for an MVP, think of it as like a backup plan. Like if I need to simplify this project to like it's uh, bare bones, like what is it? Um, so yeah, that's a good thing to plan for. Okay, um, so one of the things that you can do uh, for your data science project is expand your EDA. Um, so I feel like when I've been talking about EDA over the course of this program, it's been very task specific. So here there's like context specific EDA and task specific EDA. Uh, like for me, as you know, like, you know, classification, I always like to see very comparative EDA for regression. I like to see the ones that kind of confirm whatever um, assumptions you're trying to make. Um, so that's more task specific EDA, uh, but for a capstone project, especially one that maybe has very rich data that is not exactly relevant to uh, the model that you're trying to build, you can do a context specific EDA. So first, like what will be some background knowledge that is important for an audience to be aware of, and also what overall information of your data is going to be somewhat relevant to your task. I know for, for this is this is very, very vague because there can be so many different kinds of projects. Um, but when you're thinking about doing your grasp in an MVP, you usually want to focus more on the task specific EDA because this will be the most value add uh, for your project in the process. OK, questions? Quick thing. Um... <laughs> For, I guess, context-based like EDA, mm -hmm. like or, or basically like for me, I have no like I mean I have a little like legal like information, but I like basically like no like legal like background. So yeah. it's for like I understand like looking into the data and like finding information, and but is that like okay? It's like that I don't really know like too much about like the technical terms for like. Each stock, or should I like do more research? I no, guess no, that that's fine. Like a better background. <laughs> that's fine. We don't expect any of you to have like full contextual understanding of the project that you're doing. Um, so instead of thinking of, of it as like, oh, I need to like, I mean, sure, I of course do a little bit of reading as like, okay, does your project make sense to have in the context in the business case that you're trying to set up? But maybe if you don't have like the knowledge to be like, oh, okay, I have to look up like, I don't know, words that are related to the plaintiff, or I don't know, I don't know legal either. Uh, maybe go do your EDA based off of what you are curious about. I think curiosity is something that you can drive your context specific EDA. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's no like prescribed like, oh, this industry, you gotta do like this kind of exploration. And like, yeah, yeah. Especially like if it's something that you, you don't have too much experience with, we, we're not expecting you to be experts in the field of what you're doing your project. 
Um, I put this line of code here because people always ask for it. Um, if you want to embed your image in like a markdown cell uh, and you want to like adjust its width nicely, that's the code for it. Um, this works in your markdown cells. This works in your readme as well. Here's the code because I like I've been like looking. I look for this piece of code like I don't know like during the capstone phase. I'm looking for this like multiple times a week. So that is there. All right. Um, so there are many other little things like within the project that like I'm not going to go through because it's going to be very specific per project. Now, actually, since we're here, I'm going to go to the playlist of recordings and talk through some of the stuff. So I've added your project presentations. Ooh, I don't like that. It's my face there. But anyways, um, OK, so I put some capsule recordings that I think uh, will be helpful. And let me like just give a breakdown of in what video you can find what information. Um, the first two are going to be kind of reviews. Well, I guess this first one is more of review. Uh, and this is an API web scraping review. In this video, I go through scraping or getting data from five different data sources, including Spotify, uh, Reddit, what some others. I think, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Uh, the notebooks are actually also in your repo. So if you go to your study group repo, I have all of this information here. So let's find out what API I used here. Um, if it would load, okay, cool. Oh, Twitter data, there we go. So I got, uh, I walked through how I used Twitter data, Spotify, Reddit, board game data, and also Craigslist. Um, so if you just like to see some examples of using an API or doing some web scraping, I have that information here. Sorry about this long output, but if you, if you clone the notebook, you'll be fine. Um, I talk about creating SQL databases, and I actually talk about two main methods of doing it. Uh, one is very, very simple using pandas. It's literally like data frame dot to SQL, and it creates a SQL table for you. Um, including SQL in your projects is a really great way to just prove that you are familiar with SQL. I know we didn't spend too much time on it in like in phase one, but um, SQL is one of the like baseline requirements for data science jobs. And it's going to be one of the things you'll see. I talk about it in the, some of the later videos. Um, is one of the first things I recommend that students go back to practice as they're uh, wrapping up their capsules or preparing for job interviews. So uh, I talk about creating SQL databases that way. And I also talk about creating SQL databases on AWS. Um, so if you are interested in like listing AWS on your resume, Check out that video. As you can see, it's only like half an hour long. I provide most of the code for you, which actually comes from their documentation as well, on how you can set up a database on AWS and connect to it using your Jupyter notebook. Uh, so that is there. Uh, Jupyter Dash is a dashboard in Jupyter notebook using Plotly. I really, really like Jupyter Dash a lot. Um, and yeah, that's that video. I go through an NLP review because I know like, well, my last cohort, a lot of people did NLP. Uh, so I, I did an NLP review uh, there. Um, I also have another review that I'm trying to find because I forgot when I did it, uh, but I'm gonna put those other like deep dives in there too. Um, I have like a full one on front ends. Front ends, I, it used to be the case where I had to send everybody like the zip file, but I, figured out which were the files they were taking up all the space and it was the data files. So I got rid of those. Um, and so here you can find three templates for front ends that you are more than welcome to take and adapt to your own project. Um, in the recording, I talk about how you would go about adapting this. So um, so yeah, feel free to clone, clone this, take any of these templates and make your own. I also talk about like, there are three different kinds of front ends here. And in that video, I talk about um, when you would want to choose one over the others. Um, and here, the last three are more like qualitative, I guess. I talk about um, how you should clean up your GitHub so it doesn't look super messy. I use mine as an example, which is not nice, but um, I do talk about what I would do if I was on the job hunt. I talk about clear, cleaning up your resume, things to keep in mind and also preparing for data science interviews. Um, so these are videos that I would like, I'll, you should get to these videos like towards the like end, end of your capsule, but really only when you're preparing for your, uh, for your job search. But all of these videos will be here. Um, I will say these last few ones um, as a disclaimer, 
uh, these are things that I have learned from my former students from like the I didn't interview that much to be honest um but but yeah from the from what experience I had and the experience that I've heard from like other students friends uh, people in the industry I have like a couple of recruiter friends too so um, that's just information that I've aggregated from there and they all have accompanying google docs if you would like to read through those and those google docs can be found in the resources google drive um, I've actually added a lot more to each of these so if you want to go back to like the past phases, I've actually added all of the PowerPoint slides that I've ever used. Um, same for all the phases and phase five here, you can see that I talk about, I have the concept questions, capstone guidelines that is here. Um, I have the project deliverables, oh, post-graduation resources. You can take a look at that. This I think I've sent to a couple of you before, but I recommend a bunch of online courses, books, uh, stuff like that. Um, also, yeah, talk about interviews. Uh, resume tips, all of that is there. And I think interview, yeah, interview overview, that's there too. Cool. Um, so that is what's in there. Any questions? I know I just like dumped a lot of resources on you. I just want you all to be aware that even though I'm gone, like my spirit lives on in these, in this, <laughs> in these folders here. Um, any questions before I talk about more of like, as you're wrapping up, what to expect? Yeah, so for SQL, Mm -hmm. for using a SQL database, would the libraries that we use be compatible with the SQL databases? Yeah, it will be. So here, I can show you the simpler version without AWS. Uh, actually, here, if I open up this uh, notebook, you'll see. Um, so here, I have a bunch of CSV files that I'm reading. To create a database, you just have to create the database like this create the SQL table and the SQL table will be created. So it's creating the table. And then you can, if I know this, we did a very long time ago, but if you do like engine.execute, you can get these tables back. So it, it is compatible with Pandas. Okay. Yeah, and even AWS, I know like there's a lot of complicated code that I talk about. Um, I talk about it during the video. This is an error message that is there on purpose. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of like, insert code here, but at the very end, I'd be like, all right, if I'm connected to this database, can I execute this? I do execute the 10 rows of data that I put in there. So like NumPy, Pandas, mm -hmm. Scikit-Learn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the only thing that is different is the SQL. Uh, your Jupyter Notebook is just like, sort of like reaching out and grabbing the data from SQL, but all of our like, you know, playing with data frames, data cleaning, all of that is still done the regular way. So usually once you get the data from a SQL database, you can kind of like cut off the connection with SQL and you can just do your regular Python things. Oh, awesome. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Anything else? Let's see. The other notebooks that are in here, oh, I don't know why I put this here, but that is the tweets that were scraped from the scraping notebook. I walked through a Jupyter Dash example. This is the database that was created. All right, so here are just some more fun and resources that I didn't have anywhere to put them. So that's there. I talk about each of these as well in the video. So um, for graduation, just some things to keep in mind. Um, deliverables. So everything has to be done by February 11th. Um, that's like a total of 11 weeks for you to do one project, which is what, two and a half months. Um, so that's a pretty hard deadline. So be aware of that. Um, some students will get like dismissed or like forced to repeat their capstone phase if they don't meet this deadline. So be very aware of like this Feb 11 deadline. You have to do your capstone project review by then and you also have to finish your four blogs by then. Uh, the presentations, as you know, like the presentations are usually more chill. So that's when the presentation is. So in terms of official graduation date, the official graduation date is whatever date it is that you finish your last deliverable. For some people, the last deliverable is that like last blog that you just didn't do during like phase four. Uh, for some people, it's the day that you pass your uh, review, whichever one comes later. So let's just say like I finish everything on February the 9th. As an example, uh, February 9th will be your official graduation date. So that means everyone in this cohort can have a completely different 
uh, graduation day. And that's just, you know, just whenever you finish your deliverables. Um, once you're done with that, within two weeks, your certificate will be emailed to you in like a nice PDF. Um, and then in early, oh, not November, but in early February, you will get an email with instruction on how to download all of the Canvas content. So this is something that I mentioned to y'all when you first started. Uh, you will always have access to the Canvas content. Um, you will lose access to Canvas within three weeks of your official graduation. Day. Actually, let me add that here. You'll lose Canvas access three weeks after official graduation. So therefore you should follow those instructions so you can download all of the stuff that you did on Illumidesk, all of your uh, readings, all of your uh, submission, your project submissions and feedback that can all be downloaded. And it'll actually like, it, it'll take a little bit of time because it's giant files, um, but they will all be in, they'll be given to you in like a zip file. Uh, so that's where everything will be. Um, and then finally, you will have a graduation ceremony. So I will be there at your graduation ceremony. Uh, the date is not confirmed, but for those who graduate in the month of February, uh, you will be included in a March ceremony. So that's like a, it's really just more of a formality thing, but it's really nice because uh, you'll have someone read all of your names um, as you like walk. <laughs> There'll be like a presentation with like your info and, or not your info, but like with your name and you'll be asked for some like quotes and info, not info, but this stuff will be on a slide and it's just a time to recognize all the people who graduated uh, the month prior. And so it's not just you guys, it will also include um, other programs graduate. So if there are any like software engineering students or cybersecurity students that graduate in the month of February, they'll also be part of this uh, of this ceremony. And like, these are always really nice. They always have a nice keynote speaker that can that gives like, a, like an awesome speech. So there's that. Uh, the graduate, the date will be confirmed and you will all get email invites to this. And also someone will email you to get your flat iron swag. So you'll get like a hoodie, I think. Yeah, you'll get like a flat iron zip up hoodie uh, for finishing the program. Cool. Um, one more thing or a couple more things uh, in terms of capstone reviews. Um, every instructor does do this differently. This is I usually will do it in the form of an interview, uh, but I think um, that's also something that I only did for like my last school course. So it might be for you all very similar to your past reviews, which is which is great. Um, and then finally, uh, on your official graduation date or shortly after your official graduation date, you'll uh, not be moved, but you'll get an invitation to the Flatiron Alumni Workspace. Now, the Alumni Workspace is a completely different workspace. So it's not like a different channel, but it's like a completely different Slack. Um, that is one that has all Flatiron alumni on it. There's a lot more job talk on that one as well. Uh, I will be on that one. So once you get on there, look for me. There's only one ish on there. So you'll find me on there. Um, and then you can also create your own like cohort channel on that Slack too, just to like keep in touch. Um, I personally, like I talk to all former students on that Slack group. So I also talk to like my, my, co my old cohort friends. Um, on that workspace too. So uh, that one's pretty active. Cool. Now, uh, I think I've sent this doc out before, but just in case, um, here are a bunch of example projects. Um, feel free to peruse through these if you want to grab some inspiration. But yeah, these are here. All of these are my former students, and some of them have gone um, back to like, you know, work on their project a little bit more. So disclaimer, don't be like freaked out if you see something like super advanced. But yeah, I am, I think like, yeah, everyone that I'm seeing here is now working as a data scientist or a data analyst in the field. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, feel free to clarify any of these details with Abani next week, but anybody have any questions right now about their capstone projects? Um, I can also stop the recording if you have more like project specific questions. All right, going once, going twice. All right, let me stop this recording then.